We're in the basement of the Old South Church here in Newburyport, Massachusetts, and this is the resting spot of Reverend George Whitfield. His funeral was held here on October 2nd of 1770. People came from all the surrounding communities. The newspaper in Portsmouth, New Hampshire at the time reported that over 8,000 people uh, were in attendance. What was the impact of Whitfield's life? His preaching had produced uh, thousands of people who believed in Jesus Christ, and they had a tremendous impact, uh, not only in their communities, but also in their churches. He also had an impact politically, the focus that he preached on personal responsibility and personal faith. The colonists were able to think in individual terms as well as corporate terms, and so their ability to come together and to determine what they wanted to do individually laid the foundation for the patriotic movement in the colonies. When Whitfield arrived onto the scene, the Calvinism and the Puritanism of the generations that had gone before continued to maintain its form, but the doctrine of many of the churches had shifted towards works-based righteousness rather than salvation by faith alone. Rather than the focus being on the Holy Spirit working in them, it became on man's work. Cultural Christianity was still there, but it had lost its theological foundations. For example, Many theological leaders, even the more biblical, believed that it was fine for the clergy to be unsaved. They thought that they would still have a significant positive influence whether or not they actually believed what they were teaching. Whitfield was one of the new lights because he believed and preached that we are saved because God changes man and we have light inside of us because of God's work. Most of the pastors at the time believed that man's work made him right with God so Whitfield was widely considered to be a heretic. <laughs> 